Throughout the ages, history has been altered by word of mouth and the misrepresentation of those who might not have been present when some of the world's most significant events took place. Channelers Barry and Connie Strom bring through the spirits of those who actually witnessed or took part in these historical events and lets them tell their stories in their own words. Welcome to Channeling History, and now, here are your hosts, Barry and Connie Strong. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Channeling History. You probably know by now we're the only show where we speak to the souls that made things happen in the past, and we're brought to you in the Parax Radio Network. I'm Barry Strom, your host, and I'll be doing the Channeling of Princess Diana tonight. And I would like to thank you for tuning in to our show this evening. I'm Connie Strom, your co-host. I will be asking the questions of our spirit guest this evening. And we are honored with a very special spirit guest, Princess Diana, the Princess of Wales. She was the wife of Prince Charles. As you know, he has just been coronated as the King of England. Diana divorced him and died in an automobile accident in 1997 at the age of 36. She gave birth to two boys. Prince William and Prince Harry. Harry has married Meghan Markle and separated from the royal family, published a tell-all book, and generally has tried to offend the royal family. William and Kate have been designated the heirs apparent to the crown. We have channeled with the princess before, and much has changed since then, so we'd like to welcome her back to the show. Okay, we're going to do a short disclaimer. We all we think it's probably pretty necessary tonight. <clears throat> so the opinions or statements voiced on our show are the channeled words of the spirits. Do not necessarily reflect our opinions, those of the Para-X Network, or of our sponsors. Now, we always welcome suggestions for future shows or even questions during the show tonight on the chat room. So please submit your questions for our spirit guests to our email. It's channeling history on parax at gmail.com. We think we have one of the most unique shows in radio. For one thing, with a few exceptions, all of our guests are dead, and you will not hear them appearing on other shows. When we channel one of our spirit guests, we never have any idea how the questions will be answered. We're not perfect. Sometimes we get answers that are not correct. Sometimes another spirit will slip in, and Barry will not pick up on the energy change. When Barry is channeling, he rarely remembers the content of the messages he receives. There's also a possibility that he is not correctly speaking the words. What we do is not an exact science, but we think we're pretty close. There are times we have a problem with the accuracy on dates because there's no such thing as time on the other side. In early times, individuals did not have calendars and would not have been aware of years referenced in modern calendars. Many individuals who had no idea how old they were in ancient times. Okay, we welcome your questions tonight through the chat room. While we do have questions prepared for our guests, we welcome your participation and hope we get some good questions. Our previous shows are available on my YouTube channel and Podomatic.com for download or just to listen. When we begin our channeling tonight, Connie will ask the questions. I'll answer the questions in the words of the spirits. We got a good show tonight, Connie. So let's begin talking with our spirit guests as soon as you say the prayer of protection. Yes. Connie. God, please grant us your wisdom and protection. Grant us the knowledge that we can handle and keep us safe from all things that will harm us. Keep the messages positive and pure love. Keep us safe from our egos. We ask these things in the light of the seen, the unseen, and the honesty of God. Diana, thank you so much for joining us again. I really enjoyed before when we talked to you, and I know tonight won't be no different. Would you like to begin with a message for our listeners? Absolutely. First of all, I would like to thank you for having me back. It's always fun being with the two of you. And I'm amazed at just how many people still pay an interest in my life. It's been quite a while now since I've passed, and Lord knows a lot has happened <laughs> in my family. So it should be a very interesting time tonight. So, Connie, if you got some questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Okay. Uh, I'd like to start out 
with what was it like to be a member of the royal family? It's a very, very difficult lifestyle. First of all, wherever you go, they're trying to take photographs of you. There's very little privacy. It's you're living in a fairy tale story. When I was a member of the family, I tried to do more things on my own. I wanted the royal family to be known for the charities that they were participating in. I wanted to be more of myself, and that is highly dis discouraged. When you're a member of the family, you follow a definite set of guidelines. It's, it's a very, very difficult life. You're living in a bubble. The members of the family think that they have powers far beyond that of normal beings. You're criticized if you step outside of the guidelines. The tabloids are always writing lies about you. It's, it's a very difficult life. I really didn't know what I was getting involved in, but I sure found out in a hurry. <laughs> uh, would you describe the personality of King Charles for us? <clears throat> Charles is a very, very difficult person to be around. He lived a life of royalty all his life. He's used to having things done for him by servants. He's very difficult to cook meals for. Everything has to be absolutely perfect. I'm not sure if the man has ever even opened the door for himself because there are other, always servants around that hold the doors. He can be quite arrogant. He obviously has little morals when it comes to sexual ex exploits. He, I would say that probably the best way to describe him is that he has the personality of a normal British king. Did you ever love Charles? Yes, in the beginning. I was... I was young. He was much older than I was. And I did fall in love with him. I don't know if it was the lifestyle, the potential fame, the concept that perhaps one day I would be the Queen of England. It was a fairy tale. But there was a time that I did love him. I must admit it didn't last very long. But Charles... I must admit that I did fall for him. He can be very charming when he wants to be. However, he can also be very cruel when he wants to be. Did he actually tell you that he never loved you on your wedding night? <clears throat> I knew that Charles was having affairs. I knew that he was seeing Camilla, but he promised me that it would all stop on our wedding. He t essentially told me that things were not going to stop. It was a very, very difficult wedding night. Was Charles having affairs with other women the entire time that you were married? Yes. And he made no secret about it. It was something that he often used to hurt me when he wanted to. He would tell me that he was seeing Camilla that he was seeing other women as well. He would, when he was really nasty and drinking, he would even compare me to some of those women. So yes, there is no doubt that he was seeing women the entire time that we were married. Did you know that Charles was into having affairs constantly at the time that you got married? And if you did, why did you still marry him? Yes, I must admit, all you had to do was read the tabloids, and you knew that he was his lifestyle was quite extravagant, and that he was seeing many women, that he was doing very that he was doing pretty much what he wanted to do. He promised me that it would all stop, and I was foolish enough to take his word for it. 
I guess that being young and foolish does get you in trouble at times. <clears throat> but the lifestyle was so intriguing. It was it was like you won the lottery. Unfortunately, with this lottery present, a lot of downside came with it. Okay. One of our listeners would like to know, she said, did it surprise you that everybody fell in love with you? In fact, they still love you. Very much so. I didn't realize just how much the British people wanted someone that they could love in the royal family. Many times, members of the royal family have a persona that make them very, very difficult to even like. They are so elitist. They may appear that they try to do things that the common person would do, but the reality is that they don't consider them ordinary, themselves ordinary. It, it can be a very, very difficult lifestyle. I tried to be myself. I wanted to help others. I thought that being a member of the high-ranking married family or royal family would allow me to do things that could help many others. I didn't realize how many restrictions were placed upon you by the family itself. I know that I upset them. I know that I tried to live my own life, and I know that I tried to do the best I could. I felt so sorry for those people that were living in poverty and were suffering. There were areas of the world where landmines were such a problem. Armies fight, they lay these terrible explosives in the ground and then walk away from them when the war is over. The innocent children would come, they'd have limbs blown off. There were so many possible places that I could help others. And the public watched what I was doing, and I got much public support. I know that it upset some of the other members of the family that I was getting so much attention. And I guess I can just say that sometimes being yourself is the best thing that you can do. Yes. Twelve weeks into your first pregnancy, you <clears throat> fell down a staircase. What happened? Charles had been drinking and was extremely nasty that night. He told me that he was still seeing Camilla, and that he, she was the only person that he would ever really love, and that I just needed to get used to it, that he was not going to stop seeing her. He was so nasty that I became very distraught. I had been having problems with depression because I had been hearing what I th was hoping was rumors. But the way he laid it out was terrible. I threw myself down a flight of steps, hoping to, sadly, hoping to kill myself. Thank goodness that it did not happen or I didn't harm the child. But I was so distraught and depressed that night that I truly did try to take my own life. Okay, you were married to Charles for 11 years. At what point in your marriage did you decide to begin having affairs? He was so nasty that I wanted to strike back at him. I wanted him to be as upset as I was. I know that it is not the way I should have reacted. But it was probably in the fifth or sixth years that I broke my marriage vows. Okay. You told us that you were plagued by depression. How did that affect your life decisions? Well, it almost got me killed. I tried. Depression is very difficult. If you suffer from depression, you're very affected by those that are around you. The strict guidelines of the royal family 
can stop you from doing what you really like to do. It can, it can hurt you. I think that depression can make you make bad decisions. As I look back, I certainly regret having broken my marriage vows. It would have been far better for me just to continue to do good. The depression helped me understand how other people are affected by things such as poverty, by worry about your life, by many things. So in many ways, I think the depression did help bring me some information that I needed. I knew that the people in certain countries were very depressed by this poverty they were living in, by no medical care. And the, I talked about the landmines earlier. There were many things, many things that affected my depression, especially as I would travel and see the suffering of others. And I tried to do as much as I could about it. Before the night of the accident, did you believe that your life was in danger? I suspected that the royal family was extremely upset that I was on the edge of becoming engaged to a member of the Islam faith. The royal family, this was unthinkable. So I did consider the fact that possibly my life could be in danger, but my heart told me that they really wouldn't do it. After all, I was the mother of children that would be heir to the throne at some time. I guess that I should have paid more attention to my inner thoughts, and people had definitely said that you may want to be a little more careful. Yeah. On the night that you died, you, of course, were with Dodi Fayed. Were the two of you engaged to be married at that point? We were discussing engagement. It was, it was something that was going to take place into the future. And I'm sure that that information got back to the royal family. <clears throat> and that played a major role in what happened. Yeah, on the night of the accident, why were you not wearing seat belts? I always made a point never to go ride in a car without seat belts. When we got into the car that night, there was a lot of there were a lot of things going on. The paparazzi was more much more aggressive than usual. They were trying to take pictures. When I tried to snap my seat belts, I could not get them to connect. There was some kind of a, of a malfunction. Doty had the same problem, and by that time, my driver had taken off, and we were in the back seat without seat belts. But as I look back, I understand now that this was all part of the plan. Yes, would you tell us about what happened the night of the accident? Our driver, Andre Paul, he seemed strange that night when we came out. We were at a social event. We had a security man with us. He seemed like something was wrong. He seemed possibly like he had a bit too much to drink. We knew that he had been had several illnesses and that he was taking prescription drugs. But everything was happening so fast. It was the aggressiveness of the paparazzi that made us jump into the back of the car and tell him to take off and to drive as fast as possible. He said we told him to get us out of here and he took off and we were being chased by the paparazzi. They were driving alongside of us. They were snapping pictures. There were flashes going off of light. It was a very confusing time. Okay. Uh, 
Was there anything different about the paparazzi on the night of the accident? Yes. They were much more aggressive. They were trying. It was like they were trying to force us into an accident. One car, the last thing I remember is a car was trying to cut us off as we were trying to enter the tunnel. I know that Andre was was swearing. He was saying that the bastards were trying to kill us. He was speeding up and going much faster than I thought he should have been. I asked him if he would slow down, but he said it would be too dangerous to slow down. He was driving somewhat erratically, but I was thinking that that was being caused by the paparazzi. It was, everything was just happening so fast. It was, it was, as I look back at it, and when you're over here, you do have the ability to look back and see events. And as I look back at it, he was definitely cut off and was forced to hit the concrete barrier. So they intentionally cut him off. Yes. There was no doubt. Of course, me being in the back seat at the time, I didn't have any understanding, and I was unconscious after the accident and passed very rapidly. But there is absolutely no doubt that he was intentionally cut off. Who was actually responsible for your death? The decision had to be understood by the royal family. I cannot imagine that a decision with so many repercussions could have ever been made without the royal family understanding exactly what was taking place. At that time, it would have been, the queen would have known, Charles would have known. I know that Charles wanted me basically to not affect his life anymore. He wanted to proceed with living with Kamala. He wanted, he knew that he was next in line for the throne. He certainly did not want his ex-wife to marry a Muslim. There were many things that the royal family did not like about my lifestyle. Do you think Charles knew about what was happening? There is no doubt. Is Charles the father of Harry? Yes. Charles is definitely the father of Harry. Is he the father of William? There is a possibility of uncertainty about that. Okay. We have a question from another one of our listeners. Have you seen the Queen since she's passed? Yes, absolutely. I was actually there when they when when she entered and when they brought her into into the realms. She she was judged fairly harshly for some of the decisions that she made. She was very surprised at her greeting and I was in the background when she passed into heaven. Is William cheating on Kate? Is he following his dad's example? I am sad to say that William is not exactly being true to Kate. It is, when you're a member of the royal family, you have the feeling that you can do whatever you wish to do. William is a good man. William is going to make a great king. And sadly, when you are in that line that you know that you're going to be king, that there are many women that will throw themselves in front and allow <clears throat> him to have relationships. He is not nearly as bad as his father. His father was extremely bad. 
But sadly, there are times that William has been known to stray. Now that the queen is on the other side, did you ask her if she was responsible for your death? I did. When you're over here, you can have conversations. When I returned, I was very well judged. I was in an upper realm, and even though that I did violate my marriage oath, I did many things good for many people. As you know from having conversations with many other spirits, the best thing that you can do is to help others. I tried to show love to those that had no love. I tried to help those that had no one to help them. And for all of the things that I tried to do, I was very positively judged. The queen was surprised that she had accumulated karmas that she will have to pay for in future lifetimes. She did many good things, but she could have done much more. The fact that she had knowledge of what happened to me was an important part of her judgment. They were very unhappy that she had con contributed or allowed someone to take my life because I had many, many good things that I'd planned to do in the future. I do not, now that she is over here full time, I do not spend time with her. Did you discuss the fact with her that she played a role in your death? Yes, I asked her why she did it. She said that her advisors had told her that the effect of me getting married would have a terrible effect upon the royal family. They told her that if my life was taken in an accident, that the royal family would have the opportunity to respond very positively to it and that the overall effect would be to help the image of the royal family. The Charles had tarnished the image and it thought the advisors thought that it would give us an give the family an opportunity to recover from some of the things that had played so negatively during our divorce. Okay, when the queen was judged, did she get demoted to a lower level in heaven? They allowed her to remain in the same level, but they did give her karmas that will have to be paid for in her future lives. She was not demoted in realm, but she was certainly not allowed to advance. And some of the karmas that she will pay in the future will be quite harsh. Yeah. Was Charles also responsible for your death? I mean, you said he knew about it, but did, did he help put it together? The individuals that put this together would never have done it without approval from the top. At that time, Charles was one of the most important members of the family. He had contacts with members of the military, with intelligence. It could not have taken place if someone in the same role or Charles himself did not give the order. What do you think now that Charles has become the king? I have very, very mixed emotions. I know that I would have never been queen. I'm the one that forced the divorce between Charles and myself. 
I know Charles's flaws better than anyone else. I realize that since the divorce, he has tried to do things to repair his image. The fact that Camilla is the Queen of England, I find very bothersome. She is the one that Charles said was his true love. I'm sure that if it had not been me, it would have been somebody else. When you're over on this side, you're not to be supposed to have any hatreds. But as God has said in many of your messages, you are allowed to have dislikes. And I bear strong dislike for her. Charles has many beliefs, especially many liberal beliefs that can create what I believe can be problems for Great Britain. He understands that freedom has to be defended. I hope that he realizes the risk that Russia is now introducing for Europe in general. Great Britain has been at the forefront in supporting the Ukrainian army in their attempt to defeat Russia. I hope that Charles continues to understand just how important it is that freedoms be protected. In reality, a king has limited powers. He can influence. There are things he can do. But Great Britain is a parliamentary government. If Charles decides to do what is right, to help the poor, to use some of the vast wealth that he has access to, to cure poverty, to provide medical care, to do many of the things that can help the people, then he can be a decent king. Charles has many moral shortcomings. Hopefully that is all past him now that he is getting up in age. He's making good decisions in that William will be the next king. So I guess the decision is in his hands. So far, what I'm seeing from over here, he's doing a pretty decent job. What is the true opinion that King Charles has of Harry and Meghan? Charles is furious with Harry. It seems as though Harry is trying to do as much as he can to hurt the royal family. How Harry has been, ha be been behaving recently is a surprise for me. I did not think that he would so go against the family. Harry is a wonderful person. I still love him with all my heart. Harry has great abilities. Harry could have done much for Great Britain. Harry served in the military. He did all of the things that members of the royal family were expected to do. Charles is furious with Harry. He cannot believe that his own son has turned against him in this manner. Charles is very vindictive. Charles will do whatever needs to be done 
to protect the royal family. I sincerely hope that Harry stops, shall we say, prodding the lion, because Charles has done things in the past, and I would sincerely hope that he is not tempted to do things in the future. What is your opinion of Meghan? When Harry initially began his relationship with Meghan, I thought that it would have the opportunity to be a lasting relationship. There's no doubt that Harry loves his wife. The two children are gorgeous children. I spend a lot of time watching them. But Megan has, and I'm trying to be polite, Megan has many problems. Harry is so in love with her that he responds to her wishes. Megan was not able to adapt to the royal family lifestyle. She pushed him into leaving the family. Megan wants fame. Megan was an actress, and she wants she wants her life to be very much in the public eye. She has not been a good influence on my son. He is not going to leave her. He is very much in love. But they need to set up an independent life where they are not continuously taking pot shots at the royal family. The family does not enjoy having to continuously answer to negative questions that have been promoted by Harry and Meghan. I hope that they will continue to understand that the way to find public acceptance is not through insulting the royal family. Did Charles order that Meghan and the two grandchildren not be present at the coronation? Yes. As I said earlier, Charles is infuriated by what has taken place. He wanted it to appear as though there was a possibility of reconciliation. So he invited Harry to the coronation. Harry and William did not get along and argued. Harry has got to learn that there are things that should not be public knowledge. How do you think Charles will handle Harry and Meghan now that he's king? That is a very difficult question to answer. How Charles handles Harry and Meghan is totally dependent upon how Harry and Meghan behave in the future. If they continue to take pot shots, to tell lies about the family to put the royal family into a bad light, then Charles will respond accordingly. And in my own mind, I do not know what accordingly means. Do you think there's a possibility that Harry and Meghan could be in danger if they don't change their act? I didn't think that I was in danger, but I was. And now I'm sitting over here watching everything taking place. It will all depend on the extent 
to which Harry and Meghan go to insult, to insult the royal family. Do you think there's any possibility that Charles will allow them back into the royal family after the history? I think there's a chance that Charles would reconcile with them. I do not think that there's a chance that he will ever let Harry be king. I think that he would let them in, that he would allow them to return. I'm not sure that he would allow Harry and Meghan to return. It may be that Harry would have to get a divorce in order to come back into the royal family. Now that it's apparent that William will be the next king, what advice would you give your son? I would advise him to stop. I would advise him to stop trying to gain personal fame by insulting the royal family. Many have tried it before, and many have failed. The more negativity that he brings upon the royal family, the more negativity that will will be brought upon he and Megan. Okay. What advice would you give William now that he's going to be the king? Or, yes. <laughs> I would advise him to follow the oath of his marriage, to be as good a, a person as he can with his wonderful wife, to be a good, a good father, to do all the things that will have the people support him. It will not be that many years until he becomes king. He needs to set the best example that he can. He needs not to bring any bad light upon the royal family. Yes, what's your opinion of Kate? You said she's wonderful, but... I love Kate. I think that she is a really good person. She has not brought any shame upon the family. There is very, very little negative about her. Even the tabloids seem to like her. She will make a wonderful queen when the time comes. How do you think King Charles will handle Prince Andrew? Charles is furious with Andrew. He was always a playboy. He always thought he could do what he wanted to do. He is guilty of much of what he's being accused of. Andrew has been basically stripped of all the powers that he has or had. Andrew and Charles are not getting along, and Charles will do anything he can to protect the family and to keep what Andrew did a secret. Was Andrew truly guilty of having relations with minors? Sadly, he was. Andrew felt that he was untouchable because of his position. The public blowback from what Andrew did has been very upsetting to Charles. Do you think anything will ever happen legally to Andrew for all of this? No. The royal family is still very, very powerful. Andrew will settle any lawsuits. He has access to funds. He will be protected from prosecution. He is still a member of the family. And even though he did many things for which he should be prosecuted, it will not happen. Did you think Harry should have published his book, Spare, in which he attacked members of the royal family? That was a major mistake. I think... Well, I know that Megan was behind it. She thought that it would bring many attempts for interviews, many attempts for her to be on television, for her to gain fame. And sadly, 
the book was so malicious that it has brought great attention from the members of the family. Harry should have never done it. He should not have said many of the things in that book that he said. Many of the things and accusations that, of which he wrote were not accurate. He has only made things worse by following his wife's wishes in this. What do you think about Harry telling Oprah Winfrey that he was financially cut off by Charles? Well, it was the truth. Charles was so upset with them, and he realized that they were making a good income living in California. He knew that they had had contracts for series. They were going to be on Netflix. There were many things that they had lined up. And Charles reacted by cutting off the funding from the family. Harry was extremely upset, but he should not have discussed it in such a huge public forum. I think it was... A mistake. It should have been kept personal. Do you think Harry and William will ever repair their relationship? I ask the guides and the angels each day to help guide them and bring them back together. William is so upset with what Harry has done. Harry crossed many boundaries that members of the family do not cross. Harry has even attacked his brother. There is much bitterness. I do not think that they will ever regain the close rela relationship they had when they were young. I think that Megan has instigated much of the negativity between them. And I do not see any way that their relationship can ever be, go back to what it was. Okay, we have another question from our chat room. Who do you hang out with in heaven, and are you still close to Dodie? Absolutely. Dodie and I would have been married. I'm very close to him. We hang out together. His family members, my family members. I d definitely do not hang out with the queen since she's over. I do not hang out with individuals that started rumors about me when I was alive. I do hang out with many other royal family members. Keep in mind that when you're over here, there is no time. So if I want to speak with Henry VIII, I can do it. So there are many, many choices over here, and I take advantage of it. Do you consider any members of the royal family as racist? No, I never saw that. I know that Great Britain has members of all races. We welcome everybody. I know that I was never racist. I think that there, there's always someone that will do acts that are out of line. Perhaps some second or tertiary member of the family may have made a comment about Megan because of her background. But... The royal family has many, many problems, but racism is not one of them. Does the royal family follow a maxim of never complain, never explain? That's a good way to put it. As a member of the family, you have spokesmen that will answer problems. They never want you to speak up and give your opinion when there is a problem. 
There will always be a spokesman that will answer problems in a politically correct fashion. I think that is a good way to describe it. Never complain and never explain. What do you see as the future of the royal family? I see William and Kate as the saviors for the royal family. They are capable of bringing the family back to great popularity. The generation of Charles and Andrew created huge problems for the reputation of the family. The queen tried her best. The fact that she lived for so many years was good for the family. Because the longer she was in power, the more people forgot. William and Kate, I think, will do an incredible job, and I do see them as the future of the family. So, Charles, do you think he'll be a good king for England? He has the opportunity to be a good king for England. He has to listen to his advisors, and he has to serve the people. If he serves the people, he can be a very good king. If he follows many of the personality trends that he has, then he can be a a bad king. But I truly believe that he will try to do his best. England has a parliamentary government. How much influence does a king actually have in governing Great Britain? Today, the king has actually very little control over the government. They, the royal family, is to set an example. They live as kings have lived for hundreds of years. People love the fact that Great Britain has a king and queen. They have accumulated so much wealth and property that there are many things that they can do for the people. You have to differentiate what the king and queen can do with their own funding. They are actually quite separate from Parliament. We have a prime minister that has much more power. The king and queen are publicly in the forefront. They are attributed much more power than they actually have. But I think that the king and queen, the royal family can set a wonderful example. When I was alive, I tried to do my best. What do you think of Camilla as queen? I think I would rather not answer this question. (laughs) I don't blame you. Sorry. Uh, Are you considering reincarnating? Yes, I am. I'm looking at the world with all the problems that are out there especially the war that's going on in Europe. The Ukrainians are going to need so much help rebuilding when this is over. If Russia's not careful, they'll destroy their country with this. The economic problems that they're having will follow them into the next century. The world is a mess, and I'm actually thinking of returning. The world is indeed a mess, Do you think there's any hope for humans? There's always hope. I know during World War II, it was a dangerous time, the Cold War. Today, there are thousands of nuclear weapons on both sides. I keep hoping that humans will understand the need to coexist. As long as humans want power, want wealth, want to control the world. It's a very difficult time. I know that if 
People do not do everything they can to bring love and to bring hope that there will be no hope for humans. If you look back at history, man has truly not advanced much in the 2,000 years. They've gained technology, but there's still as much violence as there was thousands of years ago. So there's always hope. God created hope. And as they say, hope reigns eternal. Yeah, but one final question from our listeners. What level are you in, and do you have a favorite thing that you'd like to do when you're in heaven? Actually, I'm in the upper sixth level. And I just simply like to hang out with wonderful souls that are over here. Nobody can understand the grandeur of heaven until they get here. Diana, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Do you have a final message for our listeners? I would like to thank you for allowing me to return. I tried to do my best in life, and I hope that people follow my example and do the best in their lives. I hope that they show love, and I hope that they learn that anger and hatred is not the answer. Humans need to work at coexistence. If you do not learn to coexist, then there will be no hope for humans. You need to do what you can. If each person did their part towards getting along with others, then human evolution would be assured. So thank you. Thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. If you wish me to come back, I would be happy to do it. Thank you, Diana. We just might take you up on that. Okay, guys, next week we're going to be channeling a famous liberal, Franklin Roosevelt, and a famous conservative, Rush Limbaugh. Now this should be quite a show. It's going to be a lot different from tonight. You can submit questions in advance through our email, channeling history on parax at gmail.com. I want to thank everybody that tunes in. We had many people that have followed us now. We've been on the air for almost three years. It's been an interesting experience. We've had to do many, many different souls. If you can imagine how many souls that I've channeled with in almost three years, it's an amazing number. We're trying to bring you interesting things. Uh, I think next week's going to be interesting. Roosevelt was a confirmed liberal, and we all know what Rush Limbaugh was. So anyway, I thank you for tuning in. I hope that you will listen to us next week. And I would also like to thank you for tuning in. I hope you all have a great week. God bless every one of you. And thank you for listening. Join us Sundays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on the Parax Radio Network. Thanks for listening to Channeling History. Tune in again next week for another electrifying episode as we never know who will make an appearance or who will come through the portal. Any rebroadcast or other use of this program without explicit permission is strictly prohibited. Copyright 2020. Our story begins by Kevin McLeod, licensed through Incompetech.com. Incompetech.com.